so this is the final exam uh, review of uh, part 2 in this uh, we are going to talk about uh, introduction to second order linear ordinary differential equations uh, in that we can talk about uh, what we mean by general solution and the linear independence uh, including Ronskian test then we can talk about the reduction of order method uh, that means uh, we can reduce a second order differential equation to a first order differential equation if you know one solution and then we talk about constant coefficient second order differential equation then we talk about one of the very special case what we call the Cauchy Euler differential equation then we talk about the higher order constant coefficient differential equations and how to solve them using uh, what we call the characteristic equation method and then we talk about uh, non-homogeneous equations under that we can talk about undetermined coefficient method and the variation of parameters method so uh, let's start with the second order uh, linear ordinary differential equations Uh, so this is number 16 according to our list so this is uh, second order linear second order linear uh, ordinary differential equations uh, so let uh, y be the dependent variable dependent variable and x uh, be the independent variable it's always a good idea to check what is the independent variable um, because sometimes we're going to confuse and write the wrong one and everything is wrong after that so if you look at a uh, general second order linear differential equation you can write that in this form so you can write this as ax that's the coefficient function of the first uh, the highest term and then we have bx that is another coefficient function of the second one and then plus cx y equal dx because x is the independent variable so you can write it like that that is the general second order linear differential equation now what we're going to do we're going to divide by the ax term just to make it easy and to bring it to the standard form so we can divide by ax so dividing by ax dividing by ax uh, we can write this equation as y double prime plus uh, bx of ax bx of ax later we call that px and then uh, y prime plus uh, cx over ax y equal uh, dx over x so we can write like that now what we can do uh, we can call this uh, bx of ax px and this is qx and this is uh, fx so with that we can write the standard form so we have the standard form standard form uh, y double prime plus px uh, y prime plus qx y equal fx so this is what you get and this is what we normally call a standard form um, so if the because we know that ax is not zero completely zero so therefore we can always do that it can be zero what we can do we can remove those points so what we normally call a singular point so we remove them uh, now what we know this is a second order differential equation so there should be uh, so this is second order uh, OD so that means uh, in theory there should be two solutions so there are there are two solutions there are two solutions why because this is uh, second order so there are two solutions so let's talk about uh, the special case yes uh, first we're going to consider the case where fx is uh, zero that's the easy one uh, so let's talk about that so that's what you call the homogeneous second order equation homogeneous homogeneous uh, second order uh, differential equation 
homogeneous second order differential equation. So uh, what is that? That is means if f x function is identically zero, uh, then the differential equation is homogeneous. You just say homo. That's mean homogeneous. Okay, that's in short sometimes. Uh, good. Uh, now we have this uh, very important result, uh, what we call the superposition principle. So what is so this is what we call the superposition principle. Uh, so let's say superposition. So what it says that if y1x and y2x, if y1x and y2x are two solutions, are two uh, solutions, are two solutions of the homogeneous equation of the homogeneous equation uh, if the homogeneous equation y double prime plus px y prime plus qx equal 0 then y equal c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is also is also is also a solution is also a solution for any for any c1 and c2 so that's very interesting result so what it says that if you know that y1 and y2 are solutions then for any c1 and c2 y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is also a solution okay so uh, so this is a very interesting result and let's prove this one so i'm going to prove this one so we are not going to prove many in a review but this is like one of the very interesting result and you need to know this one so i'm going to prove this one so what we normally do is uh, we can write uh, the differential equation of l operator so uh, let's say define l that's the operator so that means the second derivative that means you need d squared dx squared plus this one we can say px d over dx plus qx so we can define this operator so um, and then what can happen this particular differential operator we define this differential operator and then we know that this differential operator is a linear operator so linear operator means if you have a sum you can write as as two and if there's a constant you can pull it out that's what we call a differential a linear operator so this is a linear operator okay so let's try it this is a linear operator so it's a linear operator now what we can do uh, we're gonna act on that so uh, so we know that y1 and y2 are solutions that means if you operate on l so that means ly1 and ly2 are zero because that's uh, because y1 and y2 are solutions. So what we can do, we're gonna uh, operate on that. So uh, so let's write it like this. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna write this extra one. Uh, so this operator is linear. That is. There are two results. The first one, L uh, y1 plus y2 equal L y1 plus L y2. That means if you have some, you can break it like that. That's the first condition of a linear operator. The second condition is if there's a constant and y1, you can pull the constant out. So that's the second operator. So that's what we mean by a linear operator. Linear operator. So now let's use that fact. So what we can do, we need to consider ly. We need to consider ly. So uh, then, uh, considering considering ly, what's what is y? Y means c1 y1 plus c2 y2. Now we know that the l is a linear operator, so we're going to break it. So we can write this on l c1 y1 plus l 
c2 y2 using the first property this is from the first property now we get the second property what second property second property says you can put the c out so l uh, y1 plus l y2 sometimes we just write it like that without even bracket this comes from the second property but what we know now we know that since a y1 is a solution this has to be zero since y2 is a solution this has to be zero it's a zero plus zero that means the whole thing is zero this says that ly equals zero that means so this implies that y is also a solution so this implies that so therefore therefore uh, therefore y is also a solution so that's the proof so very simple proof are uh, using linear operators uh, so that's what you call the superposition principle so let's start to grow to um, the linear independence linear independence so what's a linear independent means let's go with the definition so this is a actual definition so if c1 y1 function of uh, y1 is a function of x plus c2 y2 equals 0 0 for any x for any x implies that implies that this can implies that c1 and c2 are 0 that means there's only the trivial solution if it implies that we call we call uh, y1 and y2 are linearly independent linearly independent linearly independent this because we are only considering two solutions that's why we have two but we can just extend this one for three solutions four solutions like that uh, just we just write for two we are linearly independent if the functions are not linearly independent if the functions are not linearly independent if the functions shortcut fun if the functions are not not linearly independent the function not if the function are not linearly independent uh, they are they are linearly depend we call linearly depend so what normally happens is we start with a with a general set if there's a linearly dependent one we can remove one one of the dependent one now we consider the new set see whether this is linearly independent or dependent if it's dependent again we remove one linearly dependent one we keep doing it and at one point what's going to happen you get vectors which are called vectors actually they are going to be linearly independent so we can do that like reduction method we can remove always try to remove a dependent one then uh, we end up with a set which is linearly um, independent that's the kind of criteria so let's try to uh, do like a one example just to see how things can work show that show that uh, y1 x equal x that's the first function and the second function y2 x is let's say cosine x are uh, linearly independent linearly independent so what we're going to be going to use the definition um, so the answer so let's say suppose uh, we have c1x plus c2 cosine x equals 0 for any x for any x now what we can do because this should be true for any x so we can just pick any value we like so we can say x equals 0 uh, so uh, substitute uh, x equals 0 so if we have x equals 0 what will happen we can get uh, c1 times 0 plus c2 times cosine 0 equals 0 it should be true for any x so we put x equal 0 so this is 1 so this says that uh, c2 equals 0 
so now we improve the c2 equals here now what we can do so uh, so that means this implies that solving a math problem is a logical argument so that's why we write it like that uh, so what we can so c2 equals 0 so we only have c1 x equals zero. now what we can do just put put any non-zero value so now let uh, x equal 1 just pick anything other than 0 so this says that c1 equals 0 so what happened now so it, so if you start with c1 x plus c2 x equals 0 if you start with this so we start with that that's the definition the proving the linear independent by definition we assume that and then we, we this implies that c1 and c2 has to be 0 so that means by the definition the two functions are linearly independent okay um, so we can say uh, thus c1 equals c2 equals 0 okay? therefore by the definition therefore therefore by the definition therefore by the definition y1 x and y2 x which is cosine x are linearly independent okay so that's the proof it's very short proof but just substitute proper values and we try to prove the c1 equals c2 equals 0 so that's how we prove like something linearly independent now uh, so this can be lengthy sometimes so we have instead the what we call the Ronskian test so let's talk about that Ronskian test for uh, linear independence Ronskian test for linear independence. What it says that we're going to calculate the Ronskian. So what's the Ronskian of uh, two functions y1, y2? So it defined as a two by two matrix, a uh, two by two determinant. It is y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. That's for two by two. So what it says that if this is not equal to zero for some, not all, for some, all is good, but we don't need that. For some x naught, some x value then uh, y1 and y2 are linearly independent are linearly independent we prove that where this is coming from so you can look at the knot uh, to find out where this is coming from good so let's use this idea to uh, prove this result just to see how it works so that show that uh, y1 equal sine 3x and y2 equal cosine 3x are uh, linearly independent are uh, linearly independent That's short form for linear independence uh, so let's do the same thing so we're going to go with the Ronskian y1 y2 uh, which is according to the definition y1 y2 y1 prime y2 prime let's substitute uh, this is sine 3x the derivative of sine means cosine 3 comes out by the chain rule so it's a 3 cosine 3x this is uh, cosine cosine 3x by the chain rule it is negative 3 sine 3x uh, now what we're going to be going to find the determinant this is a two by two determinant we multiply the main diagonal and subtract the product of that diagonal um, so if you multiply the main diagonal you get negative three sine squared three x minus you multiply the other diagonal so you get three cosine squared three x now what happened you can pull the negative three out so you get sine squared 3x plus cosine squared 3x we know that by the Pythagorean identity this is 1 you simply end up with negative 3 this is automatically not equal to 0 for any uh, for any x why for any x there's no x 
that means independent that is you can say for any x therefore those two functions are linearly independent so therefore therefore our y1x which is sine 3x and y2x which is cosine 3x are linearly independent you can see that's very simple uh, just need to uh, use the definition uh, the, the, the definition of the Ronsky and, and then find the 2 by 2 uh, determinant if you forget what the 2 by 2 determinant is if you have a b c d the determinant we use the vertical bars is a d minus b c that's the 2 by 2 uh, determinant okay so now we have um there are like kind of common sets uh, which are linear independent so i'm going to give you that set because it's it's good to remember that not just for this class but in general so let's let's talk about that uh so it's a result the following sets and their subsets following sets so if you pick any subset still work following sets following sets and their subset you can pick any subset and their subsets you can, you can just put any number of uh, elements that's what it means following sets and their subsets are linearly independent So this is like kind of good uh, set to remember. So let's start. I'm gonna give like about uh, seven of them here, but there are more. So the first one is this set: one x x squared x cube like that. This set is linearly independent. And if you pick any subset, for example, one two, those are linearly independent. Let's say you put one x squared x three, those are linearly independent. That's why you say any subset. You can this whole set is linearly independent, and even if you pick any subset of that, still linearly independent. Because if you make it small, it's always linearly independent. Problem comes when you add more. Uh, the second one is one. I just add one to all of them. Uh, e x. Then you square this. That means e two x square this e 3x not the square you multiply by another x so like that so this set is linear independent 1 ex e2x e3x like that uh, actually you can just go with any general one so for example let's write that so i'm gonna add one more so it's a new one e alpha like alpha is any uh, non-zero number e2 alpha e3 alpha like that so this set is linearly independent Number four, uh, how about this one? One x. This is a very useful one. We're gonna use this a lot. E alpha x, and then we're gonna multiply the two. So x e alpha x, and then x squared e alpha x. This set is also independent. You can just multiply by x every time. So. Uh, so this set is linearly independent and any subset of this is also linearly independent that means uh, x uh, no for example you can start with e alpha x x e alpha x. that's a like kind of common one so we need this later uh, when we talk about repeater roots so e alpha x and then you when you multiply by x it's going to be linearly independent when you multiply another one linearly independent this is like useful very useful uh, let's go number five uh, uh, this one e alpha 1x e alpha 2x like that e alpha 3x those alphas are different so alpha 1 does not equal alpha 2 and not equal to any of the other ones so actually this this, this only says alpha 2 alpha 3 but it's also we have it's not equal to alpha 1 as well so if you want to write it like that you have to write it like that actually so that's the idea so all the alphas are different uh, and then we have sixth one uh, one sine x cosine x and then we have sine 
2x and then we have a cosine 2x like that so this is very useful in Fourier transform and that's the Fourier transform basis actually and then we have a uh, number 7 uh, we can square or multiply we have 1 and then we have sine x uh, cosine x and then we can square them so sine squared x cosine squared x and even you can have any product of the previous ones for example you can have sine x cosine x these are all linearly independent and any subset of this linear independent and as the eighth one uh, I'm gonna write this one x sine x and then x sine x like that uh, x squared sine x you get the idea okay like that so those are all these all those sets are linearly independent and it's good to remember okay then we have this major result uh, so let's try this as a theorem uh, what we normally call the existence uh, theorem uh, so we can say uh, if y1x and y2x are two solutions are two linearly independent solutions are two linearly independent this is very important it has to be linearly independent it's not linearly independent this result is not true okay so if y1x and y2x are two linearly independent solutions two linearly independent solutions of the uh, homogeneous equation that's the homogeneous equation y double prime plus px y prime plus qx y equals zero the general solution that means any solution you can write in this form the general solution the general solution uh, is given by is given by y equal c1 y1 plus c2 y2 uh, we are c1 and c2 are any constants okay these are any constants so for any constant c1 and c2 uh, the general solution is given in this form for that y1 and y2 has to be linearly independent so that means any solution you can write in this form y1 c1 y1 plus c2 y2 that's like really powerful result okay so that's about the major things and then uh, so let's talk about the uh, the non-homogeneous case so that's uh, as we, we talk that topic we can talk about later but we're gonna put it here so that it does like everything together so now this is all for homogeneous but now let's talk about the non-homogeneous equation so the non-homogeneous equation So what's an unhomogeneous equation? We have y double prime plus px uh, y prime plus qx y equal fx. So we are fx is not identical. It can be zero for some values, but not identically zero. So the question is um, how to solve it. So that's the question. How to solve? So what we can do, we can split the problem into two parts. Okay, so let's talk about that. So what we can do? Uh, so again, how to solve? So what we can do? We can split the problem in two parts. We can do a y double prime plus p x y prime plus q x equals zero. We're gonna get this part. And that's what we call the complementary problem and then we're going to talk about the whole equation again y prime plus q x y equal fx the whole equation what we're going to do from the first one 
the homogeneous equation, we're going to find the general solution. So find the general solution of the homogeneous equation. Find the general solution. We know that this general solution you can write as, we're going to call this a complementary solution. We're going to call yc. We know that the general solution of this one has the form c1 y1 plus c2 y2 for two solutions. So this one is what we normally call the complementary solution. That's why I put a c here. Complementary solution. And then uh, from the other one, we find one solution. Find a particular solution. Find a particular solution. Just one. Here we find a general solution, here we find only one solution. Uh, so this solution what we normally write as yp, because yp, that's the one solution, the particular solution. So this one is what we call the particular solution. And then the general solution of the non-homogeneous equation, so the general solution, general solution, of the non-homogeneous non-homogeneous equation is given by y is the sum of the two yc plus yp which is c1 y1 plus c2 y2 equal yp and we know that how many conditions how many unknown we need how many c's we need because this is a second order differential equation that means we need two and you can see that those are those two unknown uh, so this is the general solution with two unknown and then we can find those c1 c2 using the initial conditions okay. so uh, so that's the that's a form of the general solution of the a second order non-homogeneous equation okay uh, to find yp, uh, we're going to use the uh, two methods. So let's talk about write that. To find yp, uh, we use two methods. The first one is the undetermined coefficient method. that we discuss later in the discussion and then we also use the uh, variation of parameters method uh, the problem is uh, if you use the undetermined coefficient method there are only three cases that we can do there are only three cases we can talk about those three later but uh, we can use the variation of parameters in that case uh, the only problem is you might get an integral that you cannot do then you're going to get stuck again but otherwise you can use that again uh, to find c1 c2 uh, we use the initial conditions okay that we normally do at the end uh, to find c1 and c2 uh, use initial conditions So we use the initial conditions at the end. So remember that. It's kind of joke, but that that's how you remember initial conditions. You use at the ends. Okay, so that's about that. Uh, and then we have this uh, existence theorem for uh, uh, second uh, non-homogeneous equations. So let's write that. So it's a theorem. Uh, existence and uniqueness theorem. So what it says that if if p, q, and f are continuous, are continuous, are continuous, are uh, on some interval, on some interval containing a. 
containing A, uh, then then y double prime plus p x y prime plus q x y equal f x has a unique solution. That's very important. Has a unique uh, solution. Satisfying satisfying y a equal b and y prime a equal b1 uh, on that interval i. So, what it says that uh, if that's the a. So, on this interval, this, this is the interval i. So, on that interval, it says that there is a unique solution because the, the, where is that interval coming from? Because that's where those three functions are continuous. So, on that interval, there's a unique solution. So, it's a very interesting result. Okay, so let's just do one last example um, from what we discussed so far. Uh, so, two solutions, two solutions of x double prime minus x prime minus 12x uh, are given by 12x equals 0, equals 0 are given by are given by uh, x1 equal 2e negative 3t and x2 equal negative 5e 4t so that so that uh, they are linear independent so that they are linearly independent. We can use a round scale test for that. Y1, Y2, uh, not Y1, Y2, this X1, X2. Uh, so we have X1 and X2. So it's X1, X2, X1 prime, X2 prime. So if you plug in 2e negative 3t, we take the derivative negative 6e negative 3t and then we have negative 5e 4t so negative 20e 4t uh, let's take the determinant again multiply this first and subtract that so what do you get if you multiply that one you're going to get negative 4t e negative 3t times e to the 4t and you when you multiply the other one you get positive and, and again minus because of uh, it's ab ad minus bc so you get 30 uh, e to the negative 3t times e to the 4t when you multiply you get negative 70 e to the t which is not equal to zero for any t we only need one t but so for any t it doesn't equal zero so therefore therefore uh, x1 which is 2e negative 3t and x2 which is negative 5e 4t are linearly independent good so that's the proof a uh, very simple so uh, so that's the uh, about basics about the uh, second order differential equations now let's move on to the reduction order reduction of order method so in this uh, we can talk about the uh, Reduction of order method. That's number 17. A reduction of order method. Reduction of order method. So what's going to happen? Uh, you start with a higher order differential equation and you're going to bring one level down. 
so that means uh, second order differential equation uh, second order differential equation you can write as a first order differential equation that's the idea it's like a reduction of order order will go down so how it works uh, one solution is given uh, one solution uh, is given uh, find the other solution find the other solution that's the kind of idea find the other one find the other one, one given uh, so how it works so uh, let uh, y1 which is not equal to 0 be a solution okay that one we know okay we know this so we know this one now what we can do we can assume a solution so we can assume assume a second solution assume a second solution uh, of the form of the form y equal that's a second solution let's call it uh, y2 y2 equal the y1 solution times u so u is unknown that's the one you need to find uh, the unknown function we're going to find that unknown function so the goal is to find this okay that's the starting point we're going to assume a solution of the form y1 times u goal is to find u okay goal is to find u so the goal is to uh, find u because after you find u then we know the second solution okay but how we do it we can start taking derivatives and then plug into the equation and then solve so that's how we do it uh, so uh, so we can start with uh, taking derivatives so we have uh, this one and then we can take the uh, so take uh, find u uh, so what we can do uh, take derivatives take derivatives and substitute uh, into our formula so what is that so uh, so differential equation is y double prime uh, plus px y prime plus qx so we're gonna uh, qx y qx uh, y equals zero so we're gonna plug in here so we can take derivatives and plug in here so let's see how it works now uh, so we have y we have y2 equal uh, y1 u so take derivatives so that means y2 prime by the product rule uh, this can be y1 prime u plus uh, u prime y1 that's what you get from the product rule now uh, let's take the uh, derivative again so if you take the second derivative y2 double prime now we have two so you get four terms so we can take the derivative so this is y1 double prime u plus y1 prime u prime from the other one u double prime y1 plus u prime y1 now you can see that uh, you can combine these two and write one equation so you can write this one as uh, y1 double prime u plus 2 uh, u prime y1 prime and then we have u double prime uh, y1 good now what we can do we can substitute this okay because we know that this is a solution since uh, y2 is a solution of y 
prime px y double prime plus px y prime plus qx equal zero we can substitute here so we're gonna get zero equal uh, we have y2 double prime plus px uh, y2 prime plus plus qx y2 so let's plug in for each term so what is y2 double prime that is y1 double prime u plus 2u prime y1 prime plus u double prime y1 that's the first one it's coming from here now px times px times u2 prime u2 prime means u1 uh, y1 prime u plus u prime y1 it's coming from here now the other one which is qx times uh, y2 which is y1 u but we know that this whole thing equals zero now what we're going to do we're going to kind of uh, collect the terms in a different way so that we can use the fact that y1 equals zero y1 is a solution so what we're trying to do we can isolate the u terms we're going to, we're going to go with the u double prime terms first so what are the u double prime terms uh, u double prime we have y1 uh, u double prime that means this term then we're going to go with the y prime terms what are the y prime terms uh, let's collect all the y prime terms we have uh, two y1 prime plus that's that term uh, and then we have the other y prime so this is another y prime term so let's collect those two together so we have px um, y1 so those two have a y prime term plus um, u prime terms and then let's go with the u terms what are the u terms uh, there's a u term here there's a u term there there's the other u term let's combine all of them and take u out as a factor so you're gonna get y1 double prime plus from the second one px y1 prime plus qx y1 that's what you get from the uh, u terms and then take u out but we know that y1 is a solution that's we know that means this has to be zero because y1 is a solution so that means that term gonna go away so you simply end up with this expression uh, y1 u double prime plus two times y1 prime plus p y1 u prime that's what you have so that means that has to be equal to zero because that's equal to zero. That's how it. So that's the that's the whole argument. That's what we're gonna do. You can assume a solution, take derivatives and plug in, and you can see that there's a special term that's gonna go away because y1 is a solution, and then you simply end up with a new expression. So what we have now, so this is the interesting part. So we only have this one. So we have y1 u double prime plus two y1 prime plus px y1 times u prime equals zero so that is the equation we end up with now the goal is to solve this for you solve for u but you can see that there u u prime is there not u u prime so what we can do we're going to make a reduction of order here so what we're going to this is the whole point so we're going to say let v equal u prime if you say v equal u prime since there's no u term here uh, then we have v prime equal u prime u double prime so what happened then we can rewrite the above equation in this form so we can write the uh, the equation like this we can say uh, y1 v prime plus 2 y1 prime px 
by 1 u prime means v equals 0 now you can see that this is a first order linear equation first order linear equation so uh, first we can do we can divide by this term if you divide by that term because that we know that that not equal to zero so v prime plus if you divide by that you get uh, what do you get you get 2 y1 prime over y1 plus px just px here, times v equals zero so this is first order linear in v this is first order linear in v now we can solve this we can use the integrating factor method or some other techniques to solve this one because this can even be uh, because you can factor this you can this can be separable so depending on what is y1 looks like so that means uh, so the next step is uh, solve uh, for v first and then and then solve for u because after you solve for uh, v then we can use the fact that v equal u prime you integrate one more then you integrate solve for u so that's the idea okay so uh, let's do the actual calculation uh, in a problem because what happened when you do a real problem there are a lot of simplification going on so it won't be this lengthy when you do the actual problem so let's do a problem so and also I'm going to give you the formula for that so you can uh, use that formula uh, in the exam uh, but this is just a method if you want to do something later okay good so let's do this one uh, so it is given that uh, it is given that it is given that y1 equal x squared is a solution of is a solution of x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 4y equals 0. So we don't know how to solve this equation. But somehow you can use a trial and error argument or something. We know that this is a solution. The goal is to, what is the other solution? Find the other solution. Okay. So find the second solution. Because there should be two solutions because it's the second order. Find the second solution. So that's the goal. Okay. So we can use the reduction of order argument. Okay. Because we know that that solution. So let's see the argument and completely solve this problem. Uh, good. So the answer assume a solution of the form assume a solution of the form uh, y2 equals x squared u because we know that's so we, so we don't write y1 x squared u now what we do we take derivatives okay so taking derivatives we have y prime equal is the product rule so it is 2x u plus x squared u prime we have second derivative in the equation so that means we need the second derivative as well here so if you do the second derivative you get 2u plus 2xu prime from the first term from the second term you get 2xu prime plus x squared u double prime so you can combine this and you can write this one as 2u plus 4x u prime plus x squared u double prime we combine these two okay now uh, since uh, so actually this is y2 uh, since y2 is a solution so we can substitute that to the equation which is write a solution we can substitute the equation so we're going to get uh, x squared 
y2 double prime minus 3x y2 prime plus 4 y2 equal x squared times let's substitute y2 prime it is 2u plus 4x u prime plus x squared u double prime this is simply coming from here minus 3x uh, y prime y prime means 3x u plus x squared u prime plus 4 um, y2 y2 means x squared u which is equal to 0 because that's the assumption uh, because we assume there's a solution now let's see how it's going to simplify you can see there are a lot of simplification uh, going on here there's a type also this is not 3 this is 2 uh, you can see that there are a lot of calculation uh, cancellations going on uh, let's look at the x squared u term so there's x squared u term here this is x squared uh, u term and then we also x squared u term here and you can see that those three get cancelled so those three get cancelled out uh, because we have 2, 4 and negative 6 it's gone so that means you only end up with uh, just a few other terms so you have uh, so you're gonna get uh, so what are you gonna get you're gonna get uh, there's x cubed term here so this is an x cubed term because that's with x x cubed term there's another x cubed term here so you're gonna combine those two x cubed term and there's x fourth term so this is x fourth term because that's x squared so that means you have x cubed term and x fourth term so this is gonna uh, give you that uh, x fourth u double prime plus x cube u prime equals here so that's what you get everything else get cancelled now what we can do is um uh, we can divide this by x fourth so if you divide by x fourth so we can divide by that term uh, so that means this is going to be u this is going to be u uh, double prime plus one now x u prime equals zero now what we can do we can use the substitution so we're going to say let v equal u prime so let uh, v equal u prime then we have um, v prime equal u double prime so we can plug in so our equation simply becomes v prime plus 1 of x v equals 0 so you can solve this problem using separable method or the integrating factors method so you can use any method so it depends on the problem uh, sometimes you can do that sometimes you can't do uh, but most of the time uh, yeah so it's always uh, like uh, in this problem you can use both of the techniques so we can use the integrating factors for this one it's kind of straightforward so let's do that and finish the problem so we have uh, integrating factor i which is the integral of p uh, x dx so it's integral of px px is 1 of x uh, dx so we have e ln x and then e ln x cancel out so you get x so that's what you get now uh, from the theory from the uh, theory of uh, integrating factors we know that this side is simply the uh, derivative so you're going to get d over dx the um, v times integrating factor equal on the other side is zero uh, so integrating uh, so integrating integrating we have vx equal a constant i'm going to call c1 uh, so this says that v equal c1 over x uh, now we can substitute for uh, v but v means uh, u prime so this says that u prime equal uh, c1 of x to get u we can integrate so u equal the integral of u prime calc 1 uh, so integral of c1 out 1 of x dx that means c1 
ln x plus c2 but what you can do uh, you can ignore c2 because we are looking for one solution we can even say c1 equal 1 so set c1 equal 1 and c2 equal 0 because we are looking just one solution here so that means you're going to get u equal ln x uh, so x actually here you can say absolute value uh, because uh, we did not restrict only to positive x so x can be positive or negative so you can have ln x absolute value so okay so that means this is second solution so then the second solution y2 equal x squared u uh, which is x squared ln x so that's how you find the second solution using the reduction of order method so it's not that difficult but what we did was we start we assume a solution of the form y1 u substitute that there's a nice simplification you can see that there's some one uh, the, there are a lot of simplifications a lot of terms get cancelled out and then you get a simple equation that you can solve using the separation of variable or integrating factors method so now i'm going to give you the uh, reduction of order formula so you can directly use this formula if you get a problem like that so the theorem uh, the reduction of order method reduction of order formula so let's say uh, if uh, y1 x y1 x uh, not equal to 0 is a solution is a solution of y double prime px y prime plus qx y equals 0 remember it has to be of this form if it is not of this form you have to bring it to this form okay we need that we need to isolate the px term so sometimes you have something in front so you have to divide by that first okay so it's very important it's a solution of this then uh, another solution then another uh, linearly independent so this automatically linearly independent another linearly independent another linearly independent solution is given by is given by y 2x equal y 1x uh, integral of e to the negative px dx that's why you need to know what the px and divided by y 1x whole thing square so you can square y 1 dx so that is the formula that's a, a reduction of order formula and you can directly use that so let's use that in a problem and see how the whole calculation works so this is a problem of that type so if it is given that if it is given that y1 equal x is a solution is a solution of x squared y double prime minus x y prime plus y equals 0 find the general solution find the general solution so uh, so that's the find general solution that means it's a second order difference because that means there's another solution so we're going to find the other solution using the integrating factor method so the problem is if when you look at this one this is not of the standard form there's x squared term so we have to divide by that so we have uh, x squared y double prime minus x y prime plus y equals zero so what we can do we can divide by x squared to bring it to standard form okay so the standard form standard form is if you divide by that you're gonna get y double prime minus a 1 over x y prime plus 1 over x squared y r uh, equal zero so you can see where px is 
negative 1x. That's the px term. Okay, so you have to isolate the px term. Uh, good. So uh, then we can kind of use the formula to find the second solution. The second solution is the second solution is given by by the formula. It is y two equal y one times e to the minus px dx over y1 squared dx so let's plug in here we have everything we know so y1 is x the integral of e to the minus uh, px is a negative 1 of x dx over x squared dx this you can simplify a little bit so you get e to the uh, 1 of x dx over x squared and you can see that you cannot bring the x squared out uh, because as you're still integrating inside uh, so from that you can see this is x the top is simply e to the ln x of x squared dx and then we know that when you have e ln x uh, e ln x e ln uh, cancel out so you need x so this is x times x over x squared dx uh, so this is simply uh, 1 of x dx 1 of x means ln x so we're going to say x ln x uh, we are not going to add the c here uh, the reason is uh, we are looking for one solution okay so that's that uh, now the next step is we need to show that uh, we go, uh, these two are linearly independent uh, Okay, to show that uh, they are linearly independent. Actually, if you remember the theory, it says that these are say another linear independent solution. So at either you say that linear independent solution by the theorem, or you can just prove this. This is not that difficult. Yeah, so that solution is automatically linearly independent. The solution that we get, we can prove that taking a using this formula but it's also not that uh, difficult to uh, show that so let's plug in here and see what happened this is x derivative of x is 1 we have x ln x uh, derivative that is use the product rule so you get ln x uh, plus x times 1 of x even in this case uh, so let's simplify when you simplify what happened you're gonna multiply uh, so what do you get here you get x 1 x ln x uh, ln x plus 1 that's what you get so we can uh, multiply through when you multiply through what do you get you get x ln x plus x minus x ln x that's what you get you can see these two get cancelled so you get x which is not equal to 0 in general but x can be anything other than 0 so that means yes not equal to 0 so they are linearly independent so uh, uh, y1 equal x and y2 equal x ln x are linearly independent good uh, therefore the general solution is because in the theory we know that those two solutions have to be linearly independent to find the general solution otherwise it's not going to be so therefore uh, the general solution is is uh, given by Uh, y equal c1 y1 plus c2 y2 uh, equal c1 x plus c2 x ln x so that's the general solution so that's how the uh, reduction of order method 
uh, works so it's uh, very interesting and not that bad okay so if you have a problem like that you can directly use the reduction over the formula okay let's move on to the most important uh, topic so what's the most important topic the uh, constant coefficient uh, differential equations so number 18 is the most important one the constant coefficient constant coefficient uh, second order uh, constant coefficient second order uh, differential equation good uh, so this kind of equation has this form so it has the form has the form a constant times y double prime another constant time y prime another constant time y equals zero because of the homogeneous equation and then we know that a b and c are constants that's the case we trying to um, understand so that is the case very special case good now what we gonna do how to solve this one uh, what we did we assume a solution of the form y equal e to the lambda so that's the that's how the solution work so assume uh, a solution of the form of the form y equal e to the lambda and then what we can do you can take the derivatives of that and plug in we assume a solution of the form and then we can take the derivatives Okay, so take derivatives, so we're going to get y prime, which is lambda is a constant, so a lambda e lambda. And then uh, we can take another derivative, double prime, so we're going to take lambda squared e to the lambda. Okay, so we know how to take derivatives like that. Oh, actually, uh, it's not e to the, uh, uh, it's lambda t, it's not just lambda. So, uh, e to the lambda is a constant it's not a function it's just fun is a constant for e to the e lambda t uh, and then also here uh, so t and t okay good um yeah so we assume a solution of the form and take the derivatives so y equal e to the lambda t now we're going to substitute this in the uh, equation so let's do that uh, substitute so if you substitute you're going to get a lambda squared e to the lambda t as the first one plus the second term b a lambda e to the lambda t that's for y prime because this is y double prime this is y prime a plus c e lambda t equals zero this is y so we're gonna substitute for three now you can see that e lambda t is common so we can take it out as a factor so if you take as a factor you're gonna get a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c equals zero um, for any t but we know that e to the lambda t never becomes zero since e lambda t not equal to zero the only option that this can be zero is a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c equals zero this is what we call the characteristic equation of the differential equation because this has to be satisfied if e lambda t is a solution okay so this is what we call the the characteristic equation characteristic equation. characteristic equation good and you can directly write this equation so what happened when there's a derivative it's a second derivative you get lambda squared it's a first derivative you get lambda one there's no derivative you get lambda zero that means constant so you can directly write you don't want to show this work here you can directly write the characteristic equation if you have problem like that okay then uh, let's write this important theorem uh, so what it says that uh, 
good. So, uh, so the theorem. So consider the differential equation uh, a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equals zero where a b c constant with okay so yeah and then uh, then the characteristic equation then the characteristic equation we call char equation characteristic equation is simply a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c equals zero so you simply replace the derivative terms by lambda powers so see what happens is there a connection y double prime lambda square y one prime lambda one power there are no derivatives or no lambda powers it's lambda zero powers okay now we can write the general solution for this one in these three forms so let's write them separately so the general uh, solution has the form uh, and let's see and the general solution and the general solution as the form let's try it one by one uh, so there are three cases to consider because this is a quadratic equation uh, so it can be uh, so there can be two real roots distinct real roots equal real roots or complex roots so we have three cases uh, so if b squared minus 4ac positive uh, then what happened the lambda 1 and lambda 2 uh, uh, real distinct uh, roots so the general solution has this form y equal c1 e lambda 1 x plus c2 e lambda 2 x in that case the second case the second case if b squared minus 4 a c equals 0 then what happened lambda 1 equals lambda 2 uh, then what happened this is a real repeated situation real and repeated real repeated so the solution has the form uh, c1 plus c2 x times uh, one of those terms uh, lambda 1 x or you can uh, expand it and write it like that c1 uh, e lambda 1 x plus c2 x e lambda 1 x you can write it like that uh, it doesn't matter which form okay and the third case if the b squared minus 4 is c negative now what happened your lambda can be written as alpha plus or minus a beta i complex conjugate this is what we call the complex conjugate situation complex conjugate so in that case what will happen your y has the form c1 e alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e alpha x sine beta x so that's what happened in the in that case uh, we have a cosine and a sine term so those are the uh, three cases um, that we want to remember so again what happened in the first case you get real distinct real repeated and then complex conjugate and you can directly use the result um, so let's uh, see this in a problem or two so let's look at this problem uh, find the general solution of find the general solution of uh, let's say a 
2y double prime minus y prime plus 3y equals 0. So if you get a problem like that, the first thing is we look at the characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation equation is uh, is simply uh, 2 lambda squared minus lambda plus 3 equals 0. This is very easy to find factors. So what are the factors? Uh, 2 times 6, so you have 6. You're going to bring uh, write this as a uh, product with the uh, when you add the two you get negative one so that means it has to be negative three and two so that means your factors are two lambda and lambda uh, now to find uh, the number so you know that two so uh, how to get this number you simply divide that two by this 2 so that means it is uh, plus 1 and for the other number you divide negative 3 with 1 so that means uh, negative 3 so those are the two numbers you get and if you don't know how to do that then you can look at the uh, fact, uh, factoring uh, polynomial uh, video and I explain all different type of polynomials in there quadratic cubic quintic quartic all of them so that's a video that you can watch okay good uh, so then we have the two roots so then uh, you can see so then uh, you're gonna set them equal zero so you're gonna get uh, lambda equal uh, negative one and lambda equal three halves you set them equal to zero and get the two values Uh, if you want, I can write that step as well. Uh, so what we normally do is after that, uh, so you're going to set them equal. Uh, so then we have 2 lambda minus 3 equals 0 or lambda plus 1 equals 0. So this says that uh, if you bring this to the other side, 3 and divide by 2, this says that lambda equal 3 halves or lambda equal negative one so oh it's not an end we don't know whether we need both good so those are two solutions of lambda so the general solution is general solution is given by uh, y equal according to theory it is c1 e lambda 1 t plus c2 e lambda 2t so let's plug in the two values so it is e uh, c uh, c1 i normally put the smaller one first it's a negative one so negative t plus c2 e the larger one three halves t so that is the general solution of the differential equation very simple so let's look at uh, one from the other type uh, and here I pick the independent variable as x uh, as t so it's just up to you be careful uh, when you use that here you can pick x or t because I did not say anything okay good let's do uh, the next example so problem number B uh, so we have 4x double prime minus 4x prime plus x equals 0 and you can definitely pick cannot pick x as the independent variable now because that is the dependent variable okay so the uh, characteristic equation is 4 lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 1 equals 0 uh, how to factor this and uh, you can see that this is 2 lambda squared minus 2 times 2 lambda plus 1 squared so this is a complete factorization problem because we know that we have formula if you have a squared minus 2 uh, a b plus b squared this is simply a minus b whole thing squared that's exactly what we have here uh, so that means this is simply 2 lambda minus 1 whole thing squared yeah you can see this again in the uh, 
factor polynomial video. Good. So we have that. Now what we can do, we can set this equal to zero. Uh, so we have two lambda minus one equal zero. This says that lambda equal one half. Why? Bring one to other side divided by two. And then also is repeats uh, because, uh, or you can say with multiplicity two. Uh, with multiplicity a two uh, because it's a repeat you can see square good now uh, so we're gonna get the solution uh, so the general solution so then the general solution then the solution is y equals c1 plus c2 uh, here variable your independent variable has to be t because you can pick x there so t times um, e to the lambda 1 t because it's a repetition uh, so that means c1 plus c2 e nope, c2 t uh, e to the uh, 1 half t so that's the solution c1 c2 constants so let's do a last one from the other type the complex type so let's say y double prime minus y prime plus y equals zero again uh, the characteristic equation is uh, lambda squared minus lambda plus one equals zero you can see that you can find factors of this one so you have to use the uh, formula uh, quadratic formula so this is lambda a negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac square root over 2a so let's plug in here so you get 1 plus or minus 1 minus 4ac so that's what you get over uh, 2a means 2 so which is 1 plus or minus negative 3 square root over 3 you need complex numbers for that so that's going to square root 3i so this says that uh, so we have uh, lambda equal 1 plus or minus square root 3i over 2 if you separate this you can write this one as 1 half plus or minus square root 3i over square root 3 over 2i so you can see that uh, that is the alpha value and that is the beta value so the general solution is so the general solution general solution is given by uh, y let's say x is the independent variable e alpha x times c1 cos beta x plus c2 sine beta x so that is the format so we're going to plug in here so this e one half x times c1 cos square root 3 over 2 x plus c2 sine square root 3 over 2 x so that is the general solution is c1 c2 unknown and now what we can do is we can completely solve a problem with initial conditions as well as to see how it works as the last problem of this type so let's do that uh, so solve the initial value problem x double prime plus x prime plus 3x equals 0 with x0 equals 0 and x prime 0 equal 22 and later we're going to solve this exact same problem using the Laplace transform method and you can see how it works okay but right now we're going to use the constant coefficient difference equation technique because that's much easier so let's do that uh, okay so the answer we can look at the uh, characteristic equation so which is lambda squared plus lambda plus 3 equals 0 and then you can see i 
it's impossible to find the factors so we're going to go with uh, lambda equal formula negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 uh, a is 1 so c over 2 so we can simplify this in negative 1 plus or minus uh, negative 11 so negative 11 square root over 2 if you split this you can write this one as negative 1 half uh, plus or minus square root 11 over 2 i so uh, so that's the alpha value this is the beta value so we have the alpha value and the beta value so the general solution so the general uh, solution you can write as x t uh, which is c1 e to the alpha value t so let's say it's a function of t independent variable is t and then we have cosine beta which is square root 11 over 2 t plus c2 e to the negative half t sine square root 11 over 2 t so that is the general solution you can general solution in three lines now only thing what we have to do is to uh, find c1 c2 using the initial conditions so let's do that so we can use the initial conditions so using the initial condition uh, first x0 zero equal 0 uh, we have a 0 equal x to the 0 that means plug in 0 wherever you see t so c1 e to the 0 cosine 0 plus c2 e to the 0 sine 0 so this says that this is equal to 0 this is equals to 1 e this is we know that this is 1 so, sorry this is 1 and this also uh, 1 so that means you simply end up with what do you get uh, c1 so this says that c1 equals 0 so that means your solution kind of simplify because you don't need the c1 term uh, so that means uh, you have so thus we can write xt like this it is simply c2 e to the negative one half t sine square root 13 over 2t um, so before you take the derivative it's a good idea to do this because then you have only one term otherwise like it will be difficult so uh, now what we can do is uh, we can take the derivatives so taking derivatives taking a derivative so we can use the product rule here so we have x prime t equal uh, so take the derivative of the first term so you get uh, one half negative one half c2 e to the negative one half t no change to this term plus now you take the derivative of the other term so that means sign so by the chain rule square root 2 square 11 over 2 comes out you have c2 e to the negative 1 half t sine become cosine square root 11 over 2 t so that's what you get now we apply the condition so x prime 0 equal 22 gives 22 equal negative 1 half uh, c2 e to the 0 sine 0 plus square root 11 over 2 c2 e to the 0 cosine 0 that means as before this is gone uh, this is 1 so you're gonna get what do you get you're gonna get uh, square root 11 over 2 c2 so that's gonna give you the c2 value so this says that c2 equal 
44 over square root 11 in other words 4 square root 11 okay that's c2 value so therefore we have the solution now we have xt which is 4 square root 11 e to the negative 1 half t sine square root 11 over 2t um, yeah so that's the solution so let's talk about something more about this one you can see that in this problem this is a, a periodic function we have sine term that means a periodic function but you can see the amplitude that's the amplitude that's what we call the envelope that's going to decrease because there's an e negative term so that's going to decrease so that means if you look at the graph of this one this is very interesting so uh, so if you graph this function this is how it looks like so we have what we call this envelope curve e to the negative one half t that's envelope so that's gonna decrease so it's gonna go like that and then it's a sign a sign that means plus minus so what we normally do is we're gonna reflect it like that so what's gonna happen now we're gonna graph the sine function inside because when you have t equals zero it's a zero so that means you can start zero at zero and just the sine graph between these two envelope that's exactly what happened in this kind of situation um, so this is simply this curve is simply a uh, 4 square root 11 e to the negative one half t that's that curve this is exactly the opposite of that this is the negative 4 square root 11 e to the negative one half t um so these kind of situations are like kind of common like you know if you have like a bob hang like that and put like a sudden force like impulse then it's gonna go in a, like a motion like this uh, it's gonna go to this corner and to that corner so what's gonna happen because of the air resistance the uh, this gonna slow down so that means if you look at the graph of this one if you graph it this is exactly what you get it's gonna start here it's gonna give a sudden jump because the impulse and then it's gonna slow down and gonna go and stop like that so that's the situation so this is uh, the solution you you get using uh, differential equations so that's a kind of nice idea okay so that's about the constant coefficient differential equations uh, and how to solve it there are three cases and we talk about those three cases uh, in the next uh, we can talk, talk about another special case uh, what we call the koji euler differential equation so in this uh, let's learn how to uh, how to solve the koji euler differential equation so this is number 19 uh, koji euler Kochi Euler a differential equation. Some people call it Euler Kochi, but same thing, C E equation. Uh, so a Kochi Euler equation has this form. So it is A x squared uh, y double prime plus B x y prime plus C uh, y equals zero. So that's a format. It's also second order homogeneous differential equation and also linear equation because b x is the independent variable so x is the uh, independent variable so that means this is still linear so how to solve it uh, we can assume assume a solution of the form assume a solution uh, of the form assume a solution of the form uh, y equal x to the lambda power and then what you're trying to do we're gonna uh, sub take the derivative and plug in there and solve for lambda that's how we do and solve for solve for lambda so that's the kind of idea so uh, if so once you do that what's going to happen uh, because we're looking for two solutions so let's say uh, if they are if they are lambda 1 which is not equal to lambda 2 uh, then the solution then the solution is 
simply y equal c1 x lambda 1 plus c2 x lambda 2. So that's the kind of idea. So let's look at a problem and see how it works. Uh, so example, solve, solve x double prime uh, x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime minus 5y equals 0 uh, for x positive. So let's say x positive. So how, we, how it works? So we can assume a solution. So assume uh, a solution. Assume a solution uh, of the form y equal x lambda then what happened we take the derivative so y prime which is uh, if you take the derivative so lambda x lambda minus 1 just by the power rule and then y double prime we take one more so it is lambda lambda minus 1 x to the lambda minus 2 now what we can do we can substitute that okay so we substitute that substitute so once you substitute what happened you have x squared and then y prime y double prime which is lambda lambda minus 1 x lambda minus 2 minus 3 x uh, lambda prime term y prime term which is x and uh, no, lambda x lambda minus 1 and then minus 5 y term so those are the three terms so again so this is the y double prime term this is y prime term and this is the y term so those are three terms and you can see that uh, you can simplify this you get x to the lambda in each term so we can take it out so you're going to get a lambda times lambda minus one minus 3 lambda minus 5 x to the lambda equals 0 but we know that uh, x to the lambda is never 0 because x not equal to 0 so that means only thing should happen is um, the whatever inside the bracket has to be 0 but you can see if you simplify that you're going to get lambda squared you get minus lambda minus or minus 4 lambda minus 5 equal to 0 that's what you get so this is very easy to solve so we're gonna uh, look at the factors uh, so what are the factors uh, you can see lambda minus 5 and lambda plus 1 are the factors so this can give you uh, lambda equal minus 1 and 5 so the general solution so general solution is y equal c1 x to the lambda 1 x lambda 1 not x lambda 1 plus c2 x to the lambda 2 so we're going to plug in that so the c1 x to the minus 1 plus c2 x to the 5 if you rewrite it um, we bring x down so you can write this one as c1 over x plus c2 x to the 5 this is 4x pass it good so that's a solution so it's, it's not that difficult uh, so you solve for we assume a solution of x to the lambda take derivatives and plug in solve for lambda so let's discuss another method what we're trying to do here is we can transform the problem to another domain another variable so another method another method so we can transform the problem uh, so let's say for x positive what we're gonna do we can let x equal e to the t so we can transform the problem to the t variable uh, now what's gonna happen you can show that so I'm gonna skip that uh, the how it works you can look at the video general video for that 
so then what happen once you do that you can transform the variable x to t variable okay so what happened now in variable t in variable t the differential equation becomes a y double prime t plus b minus a y prime again the variable t plus c y t equals 0 you can see that this is a constant coefficient differential equation and we know how to solve this okay. uh, so that's the idea so we transform the euler coach equation to a constant coefficient differential equation by this special transformation uh, so this is for x positive if we x negative we can say x equal negative e to the t the interesting thing is you get the exact same equation even in that case very interesting so now uh, this is constant coefficient so uh, this is a constant coefficient this is a constant coefficient our equation and we know how to solve that so we can look at the characteristic equation a lambda squared plus b minus a uh, lambda plus c equals zero that's what you get so that's the uh, characteristic equation for the uh, Cauchy Euler under the new transformation now if you know these values then we know the uh, the solutions because in in the t variable what you want to do is you can transform the variable back so uh, so this is the characteristic equation and you can see this is a quadratic in lambda uh, so so this is a quadratic in lambda again this is a quadratic in lambda that means uh, there are two solutions okay so let's talk about the uh, separate cases and also uh, you can see how the how the transformation works so we can talk about that uh, so let's go one by one if b minus a squared minus 4ac that's the uh, discriminant for this if it is positive there are two solutions uh, so this have two solutions so if you call them r1 r2 r1 and r2 those are two numbers you get so this is real distinct situation so your solution y equal uh, in the t variable it is c1 e r1 t plus c2 e r2 t now what we're going to do we want to transform this to uh, x but we know this transformation in the equivalent transformation uh, so what we have we have x equal e to the t if and only if t is simply ln x so that's the transformation that we can use because the exponential you can write as a log like that so t is um, ln x so let's use that that means e to the t is simply x so if you replace that then this simply you can write this on as c1 e to the t is x so it's become x to the r1 same thing e to the t is x so this becomes c2 x to the r2 so that's the idea and why this is algebra because if you have e r1 t you can write as e to the t r1 that means x r1 so that that's what happened it's just basic algebra so that, so you get the solution in x okay so that means you you solve the new characteristic equation this is the characteristic equation for the uh coach oil equation and then after you get that those those values whatever the values simply going to go uh, here r1 and, and uh, as r1 and r2 so very simple but you have a new characteristic equation that's the only thing you remember that's the first case and the second case if b minus a squared minus 4ac equals 0 uh, what's going to happen you're going to get uh, 2 equal so you're going to get r1 equal r2 a real 
uh, repeat it. In this case, we know how the solution uh, in the T variable, it has to be uh, C1 plus C2 T e to the R1 T. Now again, the same argument, C1 plus C2. What is T? T equal ln x. So now put the ln x here. Uh, and then e, uh, this is again as before, x to the, this simply become uh, x to the r1 as before. That's the second case. And the third case, if uh, b minus a squared minus 4ac negative, then we have as before, r is complex so alpha plus or minus i beta then we can write so it's a complex conjugate situation so we can write the solution in the new uh, t variable so in the t variable the solution looks like e alpha t c1 cosine beta t plus c2 sine beta t but what you want to do is you know, write this one using the um, new variable so with the new variable uh, you're going to get e t is x so it's x to the alpha as before c1 cosine no change beta t is ln x so x is positive so you don't need the absolute sign here plus the same thing c2 sine beta ln x so that's the uh, those are three solutions so what do you want to do once you get the uh, coach oval equation uh, look at the new characteristic equation find the values the lambda values lambda 1 lambda 2 uh, we just call it r because just to remember the difference and then after you get that uh, you simply get the uh, three solutions okay so that's the first solution just put the new values there new values there and the new values in the last equation which is little long good so those are three cases so this is for x x, x positive but we can show that so i'm going to write that just for your knowledge and for the future or for the exam uh, we can see in k r uh, so we can see uh, it can be shown that let's write it uh, it can be shown that it can be shown that it can be shown that for x equal negative e to the t that's the other case that means x is negative we get the exact same characteristic equation we get the same we get the same uh, characteristic equation that's very interesting we get the same we get the same characteristic equation uh, so the general solution so the general solution for x not equal to zero so what you want to do we want to consider the positive case and the negative case so instead of x we put absolute value so that means the three cases are if p minus a squared minus 4ac positive then the solution is y c1 not just x the absolute x because it, it can be positive or negative r1 because we don't know whether those are integers so be careful and then c2 x r2 so it has the po both positive and negative case only thing is you include the absolute sign and the next one is if b minus a squared minus 4ac exactly equal to 0 in that case y equal c1 plus c2 ln absolute value of x times absolute value of x r1 that's the common r1 solution the third case is if b minus a 
minus 4 a c negative in that case uh, what happened we have alpha beta so that means your solution is simply uh, I don't think I have enough space here uh, yeah let's try it uh, so it is x to the alpha times c1 cosine beta ln x plus c2 sine beta ln x so that's the general case for any x other than zero so let's just solve one equation one problem to see how it works uh, so say solve x double prime x x squared y double prime minus 2 x y prime minus 4 y equals 0 for positive x so the answer the characteristic equation is uh, so in this case a equal 1 so we can see I'm writing uh, a equal 1 b equal negative 2 c equal negative 4 so the characteristic equation is simply a lambda squared plus minus b minus 1 lambda minus 4 equals 0 and so this says that lambda is squared minus 3 lambda minus 4 equals 0 so the uh, paran uh, you get negative 4 and 1 so this says that lambda equal uh, negative 1 and 4 uh, so real uh, distinct real distinct so that means the general solution the general solution uh, y equal c1 x negative 1 plus c2 x 4 or if you divide c1 over x plus c2 x to the fourth power so that is the complete solution so you can see it's not that difficult but you have a new characteristic equation so it is not uh, lambda squared a lambda squared plus b lambda plus c it is a lambda squared b minus a b minus a lambda uh, plus c okay good so that's the uh, that's about the characteristic uh, Cauchy Euler equations so let's move on to the higher order differential equations we just talk about the basics of that uh, and then we're going to move on to the non-homogeneous equation and undet undet uh, undetermined coefficient method so let's talk about a little bit about the uh, higher order differential equation so this is topic 20 higher order higher order uh, constant coefficient constant coefficient differential equations it's very important we do the constant coefficient only in this one uh, so those equations have this form a y n power b y not the power derivative n minus first derivative like that we have a, a first derivative and a constant um, uh, not a constant term dy term is equal to zero it's a homogeneous so we can look at the homogeneous case good same idea we can assume a solution of the form assume a solution assume a solution of the form y equal e lambda t then we get the characteristic equation as before so the uh, characteristic the characteristic equation is a lambda n power b lambda n minus first power like that so you get c lambda plus d equals zero so that's the characteristic equation 
Now what we're going to do, we're going to factor this, get the numbers, and plug. So uh, we're going to factor this. Okay. So we're going to factor this. So there are a few cases. So let's go case by case. Uh, so we have cases. So the first one is if all lambdas are real and distinct that's the most common case so what's happened just the extension of what we learned so the c1 e lambda 1 if you use the x as the independent variable like that c2 e lambda 2x like that c n e lambda n x so that's what happened in the uh, distinct case so let's look at the uh, repeated case very similar so the case two uh, let's say if lambda one uh, repeats m times lambda one uh, repeats m times and the rest are distinct the others are distinct. Uh, if that is the case, uh, then what happened? Why? So this is just extension of what we have because when we have two, we have C1 plus C2 X. So if you have M, you're going to go M minus one. Okay, that's the idea. So that means it's a C1, a C2 X, like that. We continue that. And then we have C M M term has the power M minus one. And then we have this is similar. So L lambda one X plus the rest we know. Uh, I just put some numbers. So let's say D uh, E to the next lambda value. Just repeat. And then the last lambda value lambda N X like that. Okay. So the interesting part is here. How are we going to write that term? You can see it's, if it is a m repeats, you're going to see m minus 1. If it is 2, you're going to see x. It's like that. Okay, and then the last case is the complex case. So let's say if uh, uh, coefficients are real, so it's very important. Coefficients are real, if the coefficients are real, then uh, then we have complex conjugate roots then we have complex conjugates always complex conjugate uh, roots if the if the coefficients are real uh, the solution has to be complex conjugate that's like theory we prove in algebra uh, complex conjugate uh, Let's say complex conjugate pairs. Let's write that. Complex conjugate pairs. So let's say uh, lambda equal alpha plus or minus i beta. The whole thing because you go with pairs. Okay. Repeats. Uh, repeats m times. This thing gonna repeat m times and others are distinct others are, are distinct so in that case what's going to happen y is simply c1 plus same thing c2x like that so we have c m x m minus 1 that's the coefficient of e alpha x cosine beta x plus a similar term for uh, cos uh, sine so you have d1 plus d2 x like that d m x m minus 1 e alpha x sine beta x and then plus uh, the other terms all the uh, 
non equals no? but see the format so we ha we have two there so that means we already have two m of okay because there are two m many terms and then the rest rest is n minus two m many terms are there and that's going to follow the other pattern okay so that's that's the idea and then uh, let's talk about the linear independence linear uh, independence uh, it's very similar so we can write the rask here uh, so for example if we have three functions so we can extend that to many but let's just for three so we have the Ronskian, so it's going to be y1, y2, y3, take the first derivative. Uh, so this is 3. Take the first derivative and take the second derivative. So that's a Ronskian, and then if this is not equal to 0 in general, for sum x naught the functions are then this implies that y1 y2 and y3 are linearly independent okay so that's the kind of idea so very similar uh, so as an exercise you can try this um, you can see the uh, detail in the uh, actual uh, lecture so for example show that show that 1 sin x cosine x these three functions are linearly independent and we already know that this is a one of the uh, common uh, linear independent set we discussed that earlier so just prove it and you can see that this is very easy because 1 is there once you take the first derivative is 0 second is also 0 so that means the determinant of the 3 by 3 mat matrix is very easy if you write the a cofactor expansion you only need 1 times a 2 by 2 so it's just one term so it's very easy okay so you can try that um, let's let's do a, like a regular problem so how about this one uh, find the general solution of Find the general solution of uh, 2y triple prime plus y double prime plus y equals 0. Something like that. So it's a third order differential equation. Uh, now what we can do, same argument. We can look at the characteristic equation. Uh, so the answer, we can look at the uh, characteristic equation. Uh, equation is going to be uh, 2 lambda cube plus lambda squared plus uh, 1 equals 0. So this is what we get. So it's a cubic equation and you can see that there are no four terms. That means grouping doesn't work for this problem. What we can do, we can use the factor theorem for that. Okay, so, uh, so let f lambda equal to lambda cube lambda squared plus and if you are not familiar with how to find factors of the things like that please look at the factor theorem video and there i explain like many different type of problems like in you know, a quadratic cubic uh, quartic like order four and a quintic order five and even like order eight nine ten like larger ones also we basically use the factor theorem and and then the lone division or the synthetic division we normally we go for the synthetic division we first use the factor theorem and then use the synthetic division that's how we normally do it so let's let's see how it works here so after we get that now we can notice notice that uh, and then uh, let's say note that now that what we're going to do is we're going to try these values we can try uh, lambda equals zero plus or minus one and plus or minus two we can try those values until you get a quadratic that means you only need to find one value because after that you can divide then you can get the quadratic so use the quadratic formula or factor so we just need one value to find so note that if 
negative one. If you plug in the negative one, what can happen? Two negative one uh, cube, uh, negative one cube uh, plus negative one squared plus one. Uh, how much you get? You get negative two plus one plus one, which is zero. What does that mean? By the factor theorem, this means that, so this means that uh, lambda plus one, why plus one? Because it is minus minus one. Because the minus, we plug in the minus one. So this is a factor theorem. So lambda plus one is a factor. Or in other words, negative one is a zero. So now what we can do, we can use synthetic division to find the other one. So use synthetic division uh, to find the other factor, to find other factor. So let's see how it works. In the synthetic division, we only uh, use the uh, coefficients. So the coefficients are two of the original polynomial uh, and then x square x cube has a 2 and then 1 there's no lambda term so that means you have to put a 0 there and then 1 so those are the coefficients so we check negative 1 whether negative 1 is uh, no what we are doing is we we want to get the quotient when you divide by lambda plus 1 so what we put here is the 0 <coughs> corresponding zero and you can see the lambda one lambda plus one means the zero is negative one so that's the zero so that's the one we're gonna use there what we normally do is uh, it's a very simple one we copy that number first and then multiply and add we're gonna multiply negative one with two so you get negative two with there and add so you get negative one then multiply again with negative one and negative one so you get one and add so you get there just add multiply add and the negative one negative uh, negative one with one so you get negative one add you get zero that means good that means it's completely divided if you get a zero that means it's completely divided so that's the quotient so we have the other factor right here two minus one one those are the coefficients so that means the other factor other factor is two lambda squared why there are three terms minus lambda plus one so we get that so that's the other factor now what we can do uh, so we can set that equal to zero because we looking for that so we use you can see with a you can factor but uh, you can see that there, it's not easy to find factor so we can use the uh, quadric formula <coughs> so let's use the quadric formula so we have two lambda squared minus lambda plus one equals zero a lambda equal uh, minus 1 is plus plus or minus 1 minus 4 a c square root over 2 a that means 4 so let's simplify you get plus uh, 1 plus or minus you get 1 minus 8 so that means negative 7 square root over 4 <coughs> using complex numbers we can write this in as 1 1 or 4 plus or minus square root 7 over 4 i so uh, that is the alpha that is the beta so we have alpha and beta now we can it's a complex so the complex conjugate complex uh, conjugate so complex conjugate means uh, we can use the complex form <coughs> so the three roots are uh, so we can see thus the three roots are lambda one is negative one and the other one is one fourth plus or minus square root seven over four i uh, and as before the alpha and beta so we write general solution so the general solution so the general solution we can write which is y equal uh, c1 e to the negative t plus uh, let's write the form first so what is the form actually uh, because this there's a one real uh, and then uh, complex so that is c uh, 
we can write this one as c2 e to the alpha t cosine beta t plus c3 e to the alpha t sine beta t and if you plug in that here you're going to get c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the uh, what's the alpha one fourth so one fourth t cosine square root four, seven over four t plus c3 e to the one fourth t sine square root seven over four t so that is the solution of the third order differential equation so we use um, quadratic equation c3 division factor theorem so it's a like nice problem okay so this is the uh, end of homogeneous equation now let's discuss how to solve the non-homogeneous equation so let's talk about the next uh, very important type so uh, this is the how to solve a non-homogeneous equation so this is uh, topic uh, 21 uh, solving non-homogeneous equation solving a non-homogeneous equations so uh, so we can start with the problem like this a y squared plus b y prime plus c y equal fx this is again a constant coefficient situation so with a constant a coefficient how we do like when you get a problem like that we're going to split the problem uh, we're going to consider the homogeneous part and the non-homogeneous part separately like this so we, from the homogeneous one we find the general solution so find the general solution general solution what we normally call the complementary solution so this has the format yc as a complementary solution c1 y1 plus c2 uh, y2 c1 y1 c2 y2 so that's the general solution and for the other one we find one solution so find a particular solution find a particular solution we're going to call this yp uh, so just one solution one solution just one solution so we don't need many only one solution now what we can do after we know the particular this is what we call the complementary solution so this is called the complementary solution and uh, this is the uh, particular solution particular solution and then we can have the general solution so the general solution is general solution to the non-homogeneous uh, is given by y equal we just add the two yc plus yp so you're going to get a c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus that one solution that you find so this is what we do we just need one solution and we add that to the general solution now the argument is you know that the non-homogeneous equation is a second order differential equation that means if you uh, find the general solution you need two constants you can see these are the two constants so everything looks good so because second order you need two unknown uh, two arbitrary constants we have two arbitrary constants c1 and c2 okay but yp is only one solution called the particular solution now 
how to do this in reality so what we do is we can use two techniques for that uh, we use uh, use two methods two methods uh, to find yp because we only know how to find yc uh, so the two methods are uh, first one is what we call the undetermined coefficient method undetermined undetermined a uh, coefficient method and we also use the variation of parameters variation of a uh, parameters method Variation parameters method. So the problem with the undetermined coefficient is uh, you can only solve three type of problems. So problem with the, like a uh, exponential function like that, and then uh, sine cosine, and then the uh, polynomials. Uh, so polynomial. Those are the only three types that you can solve using the undetermined coefficient method. So if you get something like secant. You cannot do using this method uh, like natural log you can do the using this method so there's a problem so we need new technique that's what what we call the uh, variation of parameters method uh, if you have something like that okay so let's first talk about the undetermined coefficient method this is a very powerful technique uh, so let's talk about that first uh, undetermined coefficient method undetermined coefficient so this is like simple idea we kind of guess the solution and plug in and try to find those undetermined coefficients uh, so again uh, work for three cases only work for three cases only that's the uh, major problem. So we have a uh, y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equal let's say f x x is the independent variable. So it can be exponential function. That means if we have like 5 e to the 3 x we can handle that. Then we have the sine and cosine functions. For example if we have 3 cosine uh, 2x minus 4 sine x we can do that and you can see that this is 2 this is 1 that's okay we can still do it and the third case is the uh, polynomials so like a 2x cube minus x plus 1 we can also do that one so those are three types that we can do exponential sine cos and polynomials so what we normally do is uh, the first step is uh, guess the particular solution guess the form of yp so that's the what we do we, we're gonna guess we guess the form of yp uh, so but there are certain uh, criteria for that so let's talk about that we have uh, so guess uh, form of yp so we're going to follow this table the first type if we have a number times e to the beta x beta is another number so your yp just a form of yp uh, going to be a e to the beta x the goal is to find b uh, I'm sorry, find A. Goal is to find A. That's the first type. The second type, there are three cases. It can be a something times cosine beta x, something times sine beta x, or let's say uh, something times cosine beta x, and another thing times, another number times 
sine beta x so here you see that the beta beta so in this case all these three has only one form all these three if you see any of them it's going to be simply a cosine beta x plus b sine beta x even if we have only one like just cosine sine we still need to have two the reason is when you take the derivative it's going to change sine to cosine so that's why we need to add both so that's the second type the third type is a polynomial type so it is like nth uh, degree polynomial nth degree uh, polynomial so you're gonna guess the form as uh, a say nth degree so it's a n x n and then uh, a n minus 1 x n minus 1 write all the terms and see until a, a constant so write all the terms okay all the terms you can miss anything okay uh, even though the actual function fx doesn't have that we have write all of them here so write all terms it's very important good so that's the kind of idea so uh, so let's talk about some special cases so not so there are some special situations for example if beta the rubber beta is a root the root of the characteristic equation characteristic equation of yc the complementary uh, solution then then yp has to be then yp has to be a you have to add extra x in front so that's very important because if you do not add extra uh, x in front if beta is a solution what will happen a e beta x is a solution so it's just disappear it's become zero so you don't get anything so that means you have to add an extra x okay to get a to get to get a uh, independent solution to get an independent uh, solution so it's very important you need that extra x there to get a independent solution that happen when beta is a root uh, and then uh, if beta is a repeated root, if let's say beta is a repeated root, repeated root of the characteristic equation, then you need to have another x. So that means it will be a, not just one x, you have one more x, so a x squared, a beta x. So that's what happened if it's a repeated root you need to add one more to get an independent solution uh, and then the next one is uh, how about you can see a combination of the two or three so let's talk about that so the next one is if there's a combination if there is a combination If there's a combination of them, write, write yp for each and combine, write yp for each and combine. So for example, let's look at some examples. So let's say your fx uh, looks like this uh, 3x minus 2e4x like that so what we can do you can see that there are two there's a polynomial and an exponential function what we can do we're gonna have both in there so because of the uh, first uh, degree polynomial you need a term like ax plus b is the first degree polynomial that's for 3x plus because of the exponential one you have c e 4x 
So we're going to write for each and combine like that. So you just write one expression combining both. So that's the idea. It's very simple. Uh, the next one is how about we're going to see product and like all of them. For example, x e to the 4x plus sine uh, 3x. So if you get something like that, now the yp looks like this. So we have x, that means a polynomial. So we write ax plus b for that. And then we have e to the 4x. But for e to the 4x, the general term looks like c e 4x. But there is something here. Because a and b already contain c as a factor. So that means we are not going to write that c here. So we don't write that. We don't include that there because c already contain in a and b. So if you add a c, that's extra unknown. So that's going to make it difficult. So we are not going to write that. So we're going to remove that. That means uh, we without that, uh, we're going to write like this. Just uh, ax plus b e to the 4x like that. So that, that argument always there. If it is already inside as a product, we don't need that extra one. So, so that's the first two. So it's going to take care of x and the e to the 4x. Now, sine. The so sine means in one term, but we know that you have, have sine and cosine both. So that means it's a c sine 3x plus d cosine 3x because if you see one of them, you need to write both. Okay, so this automatically come everything. Good. So that's the kind of idea. And then also, let's say you also have an extra term like minus a cosine x. So that means this also going to introduce another two. So that means if you if you have that, then what's going to happen? It is e. Again, um, sine cosine doesn't matter. So write cosine and also the sine version f sine. So always go as pairs. Okay. So it's, it's very important. Good. Uh, so that means, uh, so this is, go with that, and this one, go with that. So that's the uh, idea. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Now what happened, uh, uh, the other one that we just discussed before, uh, so let's say, if you, have, if you have a difference equation like this, let's say you have y double prime minus y prime minus 2 equal uh, 3e 2x. So if you look at this problem, so if you want to write the form for yp, let's look at the, it's always a good idea to look at the characteristic equation first. If you look at the uh, characteristic equation, it is lambda squared minus lambda minus 2 equals 0. The factors are lambda minus 2 and lambda plus 1. So this says that lambda equal 2 and minus 1. You notice that this exactly match with that. So in that case, what's going to happen? Uh, your yp has to include an extra x. So it is a x e 2x. The reason is uh, lambda already appear in the characteristic equation. Because if you just have a e 2x, it's not going to work. The reason is, it's a solution. Since the solution, once you plug into the left side, it just gets zero. So you get zero equal something uh, non-zero. That's not possible. You can have zero equal to non-zero. So because of that, to avoid that, we introduce that extra uh, x to get an independent solution. Okay. So to get an independent uh, solution. Because we discussed that. Because if you multiply by x, it's going to create a new independent solution. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, so what we can do now is, uh, let's talk about the, the steps to solve a problem like that. So these are the steps to solve a problem using uh, undetermined coefficient method. So steps. Uh, so the first is, the first step is always, going to be fine. Why C? The reason is, then it's going to tell you whether the lambda is appeared in the characteristic equation. So we find Y C first, at least the lambda values. That's the first step. The second is, step is guessing Y. So you're going to guess. 
so guess uh, yp you guess yp that's the second step third step uh, you can take derivatives take uh, enough uh, derivatives what does that mean if it's a second order differential equation you need two derivatives if it's a third order differential equation you need three derivatives like that as i say enough okay sufficient number of derivatives okay so it's clear and then uh, what we're going to be going to substitute into the equation so substitute into the differential equation at the non-homogeneous one and then uh, we can equate the coefficient of linearly independent terms so number five equate coefficients of linearly independent Uh, terms linearly independent terms you can equate the coin linearly independent terms and then uh, terms to find uh, to find unknown coefficients that's how you find unknown coefficient find unknown coefficients the undetermined coefficients and then after we find that uh, write the general solution write the general solution uh, in the form in the form y equal yc plus yp you can write that and then last step is we're going to find we can use initial conditions to find the c's appeared in yc okay use initial conditions that's the last step use initial conditions uh, at the end at the end to find uh, c1 and c2 so that's what we do at the end so that's the last step initial one we use at the end so okay so that's the, those are the kind of steps to solve a problem using the undetermined coefficient method so let's just do one example to cover all those things okay let's do one example okay so let's do this one so example solve the initial value problem y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equal this is 6 plus 8 times e to the negative 2t minus 4 cosine 2t with uh, y0 zero equal 0 y prime 0 equal 2 so this is a complete uh, second order initial value problem and with a complicated uh, non-homogeneous term let's go step by step the first step is find the characteristic equation okay so uh, the characteristic uh, equation of the homogeneous equation y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equals 0 is simply lambda squared minus lambda minus 2 equals 0. The next step is factor. It's very easy to factor. So you're going to get lambda minus 2, lambda plus 1. This can give you the lambda values. Lambda equal minus 1 and 2. So we're going to the yc. So the yc equal c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the 2t okay now you can see that that 2 and that one is different 
so that means you don't need that extra t for this one so we can write the yp that's why we need that first to see whether that's the right form so write uh, yp so yp is let's go term by term six six is a constant that means we can add an a for that and then so that's the polynomial part and then we have eight e the exponential term so that is b e negative to t and then we have sine cosine so it's a cosine so we're going to go to c uh, cosine 2t and also you need to have the sine term so that's the rule okay good whether you have two or one you still need to add two uh, the next step is take derivatives so number three derivatives so we can take derivatives Uh, so we're going to get y p prime uh, so that's a zero so you get uh, the exponential function when you have exponential function when you take the derivative uh, that the constant comes out that we know so that means it's going to be negative to b e to the negative 2t so that's what you get from that the constant comes out and then it's a cosine cosine means when you take the derivative it's going to be a negative sign also 2 comes out so it is negative 2c sine 2t uh, this is a sine become cosine 2 also comes out so 2d cosine 2t so that's what you give me the first derivative now take one more derivative because the equation is second order so yp double prime another negative root comes out so it becomes 4b e to the negative 2t sine become cosine 2 comes out so it's a negative 4 c cosine 2 t cosine become sine so negative 4 d sine 2 t so that's what you get uh, so we get all the derivatives now and yp so we can substitute that into the equation so let's do that step 4 substitute substitute into uh, the equation so let's do that so y prime uh, so y double prime so y double y so we're going to put the y double prime term first so if you want you can repeat the equation here uh, so it is y double prime minus y prime minus 2y equal ft that's the function we have so let's put that so y double prime terms first so it is 4b uh, e to the negative 2t my negative 4c cosine 2t minus 4d sine 2t so that is the y prime term now we're going to go with the uh, first derivative term it's a minus uh, you're going to get negative 2b e to the negative 2t negative 2c sine 2t plus 2d cosine 2t and then uh, the y term which is negative two times the y term which is a that's the longest term uh, 2 e negative 2t plus c cosine 2t plus d sine 2t which is equals to the ft which is 6 plus 8 minus 2t minus 4 cosine 2t good so that's the expression we get now what we can do we can equate the coefficients of linearly independent terms so what are the linear independent terms you can see here you have a constant which is a linear independent term and then we have uh, exponential function which is linear independent we have sine which is linearly independent we have cosine which is also linearly independent so those are the uh, four terms that we have here which are linearly independent so step five uh, equate uh, 
equate coefficients of linearly independent terms. So we start with the first term. We will start with the constant. So we start with the constant term. Uh, what are the constant terms we have? Uh, you're going to see a is a constant, and that's the only term we have. And then other side six. So we're going to equate those two. So we have negative two a equals six. This directly going to give a. A has to be negative three. So we all know the a value. Same thing. Let's go to uh, exponential function next. So e to the negative 2t. So we equate the coefficient of that. It was also a linear independent term. So let's start with that. So you can see we have that uh, e to the negative 2t. And then we have this one. And we have that one. And on the other side we have this. So those are the uh, four terms that we have. So three on this side, three on the other side. So we have 4b. And then we have negative negative positives 2b and then we have uh, negative 2b uh, <coughs> good and then equal on the other side we have 8 so how this simplifies you can see this and that get cancels so you will get 4b equal 8 in other words b equal 2 so we only know a, we only know b. Now the only thing that we need to do is uh, find the coefficient of sine and cosine. So let's go with one of them. So let's go with cosine 2t. So they are all, also linear independent. So if you go with that, we have cosine term here. We have cosine term there, there, and then this. Those are the four terms. So let's go with one by one. So the first one is negative 4c. The next one is uh, negative 2d. Uh, the next one is negative 2c. Those are all the terms on the left side equal the right side negative 4. Uh, see whether you can simplify this a little. Uh, so you can see negative 4c, negative 6c, so negative 6. Uh, C minus 2D equal negative 4. What we can do is we can divide this sum by negative 2. If we divide this sum by negative 2, you're going to get an equation uh, 3C plus D equal 2. So I'm going to call this equation number 1. Now what we can do, we're going to create a similar equation for uh, sine 2T and solve the 2. So let's see what you're going to get for sine. For sine, uh, we have uh, sine uh, 2t, uh, we're going to get negative uh, 4d and then plus uh, 2c minus 2d uh, equals 0 with just no sine term on the side. Uh, this simplifies to uh, negative 6d plus 2c equals 0 and if you divide this by okay I'm gonna write it here uh, so this can give you uh, negative 6d plus 2c equals 0 if you divide by uh, 2 you're gonna get uh, c minus 3d equal 0. I'm going to call this equation number 2. Now what we're trying to do, uh, we can simply uh, get rid of d term by, so I'm going to uh, multiply the first equation by 3 and add to the second equation. When you do that, you're going to get 9c plus c minus uh, plus 3d minus 3d which is equal to 6 and you can see this gets cancelled out so you will get the value of c so 10c equals 6 it says that c equals 6 over 10 in other words 3 over 5 uh, and then we can use uh, the second equation so d is one third of that so this says that d equal uh, one third of C which is one fifth so we find the two values 
Now we can write the general solution. So thus, uh, the yp or the general solution yp is negative uh, 3 plus 2 uh, e to the negative 2t uh, plus 3 fifth cosine 2t plus 1 fifth sine 2t. So we get all the terms. Now what we can do, uh, we get the general solution. So number 6, the general solution. So the general solution is y equal yc plus yp. Uh, so you can substitute is c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the 2t. Uh, and then minus 3, let's add them, plus 2e minus 2t plus 3 fifth cosine 2t uh, plus 1 fifth sine 2t. So in the exam, like you know, you're not going to get a question like this, lo this long, but here I'm telling you like you can manage all of them together, but you will get like one or two terms, not like a lot like that. Okay, now the last step is, now we can use the initial condition uh, to find C1 and C2. So you can see that the only thing that we don't know is C1 and C2. To find that, uh, we can use the initial conditions. So initial conditions we use at the end. That's what you remember. So the step 7, uh, using the initial conditions, uh, we have uh, Y0. So 0 which is y0 that means you plug in 0 for all the t's uh, so you're gonna get uh, so what are you gonna get so let's write a separate equation for that yeah i'm gonna write it like that so it's much easier like that uh, using initial using initial condition y0 equals 0 we have 0 equals c1 plus c2 minus 3 plus 2e0 plus 3 fifth cosine 0 plus 1 fifth sine 0. Now we know that uh, sine 0 is 0, cosine 0 is 1, e0 is also 1. So this can give you an equation. So what, what equation are you going to get? You're going to get 0 equals C1 plus C2 uh, C2 we have uh, what do we have? We have minus 3 uh, and also we have 3 uh, minus 3 and we have 2 here so it's a minus 1 plus 3 fifth that means minus 2 fifth that's what you get so I'm going to call this equation number 3 because we already have 1 and 2. Now the same thing. Let's try to use the other condition. So you get one result here. Now first we take in derivatives. Taking uh, derivatives first. Uh, we're going to get y prime t equals to negative c1 e to the negative t plus 2 c2 e to the 2 t minus 0 minus 4 e negative 2 t minus 6 fifth uh, sine 2 t plus 2 fifth cosine 2 t and now what we're going to do we're going to use the condition uh, using y prime 0 equal 2 we are going to get this equals to negative c1 plus 2 c2 minus 4 and then negative 6 fifth sign is 0 so that's gone plus 2 fifth cosine 0 okay so if you plug in the values because uh, again uh, this is uh, 0 and this is 1 you're going to get uh, if you move negative for the other side 6 equal 
negative c1 plus 2c2 plus 2 fifth. I'm going to call this equation number 4. Now what we can do? We can add them. Once you add them, this is going to cancel out. You get c2. So let's do that. And also, you see this is negative, this is positive. They cancel out also. So that's interesting. So by uh, 1 plus 2, we have 6 equal 3C2. In other words, C2 equal 2. And then you can use one of those equations. So let's say C1. If you use the first equation, C1 equal uh, negative C2 uh, plus 2 fifth and we can plug in so it's negative 2 plus 2 fifth equal negative 8 fifth so we get the solution so therefore we have the solution y as negative 8 fifth e to the negative t plus 2 e to t minus 3 plus 2 e negative 2 t and then 3 fifth cosine 2 t plus 1 fifth sine 2 t you can see that none of the terms are zero that's very interesting okay so that's the solution so it's just like a writing few terms but otherwise it's not that difficult uh, but you want to make sure that you uh, kind of follow the pattern, guess the proper uh, yp term. And then after you get the general solution, so you can see the most lendiest part was to find c1, c2. Otherwise, the problem was not that difficult. The finding c1, c2 takes time because of a lot of terms. But if I say find a general solution, it won't be a very difficult problem. Okay? Yeah. Let's expect something like that. Good. So the next topic is the uh, uh, variation of parameters, and the last that's the last one we're going to talk about in this uh, this part of the review. Uh, in the next one, we're going to talk about the series solution, Laplace transform, and the system of equations. So the only thing we're going to discuss in this one is the uh, variation of parameters, but that's the that's the easy one because you are allowed to use the uh, formula. So I'm going to discuss the formula and the technique. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about the last topic, uh, the variation of parameters uh, method. Uh, so this is 22, uh, the variation of parameters, variation of parameters method. We know that the uh, undetermined coefficient method only works for three cases. So the problem is what if you have something else uh, so we can use a uh, variation of parameters in those those cases so this is a little bit more powerful than uh, the undetermined coefficient problem so why we use this one we use this one to find find yp the particular solution of uh, y double prime plus p x y prime plus q x y equal f so we it's the same problem but it has to be in the in this form so we, we write that standard form okay if it is not in the standard form you have to bring it to standard form first so these are the steps so let's go uh, with the steps uh, so the first one I find uh, two linearly independent solutions find two linearly independent Find two linear independent solutions of the homogeneous equation y double prime plus p x y prime plus q x y. So we have to solve this first. Uh, so it can be constant coefficient or maybe uh, Cauchy Euler. So that's the first thing. Uh, and then also uh, the p x and q x may be. No, need, need not, maybe a constants, maybe constants. 
Okay, so that's the first step. You find uh, two solutions. So let them be so linearly independent. Uh, and let them be, let them be y1 and y2. So let's call those two solutions y1 and y2. Those are the solutions of the complementary equation, uh, the homogeneous equation. Now what we can do, we're going to guess the solution. So guess, so it's the extension of the uh, reduction order. Guess yp of the form, of the form, guess yp of the form, yp equal u1 y1 plus u2 y2. So for the non-homogeneous, we have one one other one other term. If you have the homogeneous, it's only u1 y1. But when you have non-homogeneous, we add one more term. So the goal is to uh, find this u1 and u2. So that's the goal. How to find this u1 and u2. So we do a very similar thing. We take the derivatives and plug in to the equation and uh, get two, uh, two equations uh, to solve for u1 and u2. So you can see where, uh, where u1 and u2 are unknown functions. Uh, where u1 and u2 are unknown functions. So we need to find those two. Okay? So the goal is to find u1 and u2. Uh, so what, what's going to happen when you plug in, you're going to get, uh, so I will skip the uh, other part. So we're going to get end up with these two equations. So we're going to solve the two equations. Solve the two uh, equations. Solve the two uh, equations. So the two equations to find u1 and u2. What two equations? These two. Uh, it is u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 equals 0. That's one equation. The other equation is u1 prime y1 prime as well plus u2 prime y2 prime equal the function fx. So we can solve these two equations. Uh, that's always the case. You're going to end up with these two equations. So the goal is to solve these two equations and find u1 and u2. And then after you find u1 and u2, you're going to plug in there. You get yp. So that's how you find the solution. So let's use this method uh, to solve a problem like that you cannot do using the undetermined coefficient method. So let's see uh, this problem. Uh, so example, find the general solution of, find the general solution of, general solution of uh, y double prime plus y equal tan x. So if you have this equation, you cannot do, uh, you can solve this using undetermined coefficient because tan doesn't work. So the uh, problem, so what we try to do is just try to find the two solutions, two linearly independent solutions of the homogeneous equation. So that we can do very easily. Uh, the, uh, the characteristic equation uh, of y double prime plus y equal zero is lambda squared plus 1 equals 0. Uh, so lambda equal plus or minus i, which you can write as 0 plus or minus i. Uh, so thus, using the constant coefficient argument, uh, you don't get the exponential term, you only get the sine cosine terms. So that means yc has the form c1 cosine x plus c2 uh, sine x. Now what we can do, we're going to pick these two functions as y1 and y2. The order doesn't matter. So let uh, y1 equal cosine x and y2 equal sine x. 
So let's pick those two functions. Uh, now what we can do is, now we're gonna, uh, so suppose, or so, y p of the form u1 y1 plus u2 y2, in this case it is uh, u1 cosine x plus u2 sine x. Now we can take derivatives then uh, from the equations, the two equations, we're going to get u1 prime cosine x plus u2 prime sine x equals 0 as the first equation. The second equation says u1 prime take the derivative. So once you take the derivative of cosine, it is negative sine, so it is negative uh, sine x uh, plus u2 prime cosine x. We take the derivative which is equals to whatever on the other side, so in this case tan x. So those are the two equations that we need to solve, 1 and 2. Now we're going to uh, think of how to solve, why we're going to use an elimination type of argument. Uh, you can see you can eliminate u1 term easily. What we can do, we can multiply by the missing term and add them, it's going to go away. So that's the kind of idea. So let's do that. So simply by, we're going to multiply the first equation by sine, the second equation by cosine, because those are the uh, missing term. We're going to multiply these two and add them, so you're going to go away. So by 1 times sine x plus 2 times cosine x. If you do that, when you add them, this is going to go away. On the other side, what will happen? Uh, you're going to get u2 prime sine squared x plus uh, u2 prime cosine squared x uh, equal, so the bottom one, you multiply by cosine. So it is tan x times cosine x, uh, which is, what is it? Tan means sine cosine, so sine x. So which is equal to sine x, if you simplify. And here, what's going to happen? Uh, you can see this is 1. So you're going to get simply u2 prime, this is sine squared x plus cosine squared x, which is equal to sine x. But this is 1, so this implies u2 prime equal sine x. That's all you get. Now what you can do, you take the integral, you get u2. So if you integrate, so u2 is simply the integral of u2 prime dx. Uh, so that means uh, you just integrate that, so that is sine x dx. That means negative cosine x. So that is u2. Now by 1, by 1, you have u1 prime cosine x plus u2 prime sine x. So if you plug in, you're going to get u1 prime cosine x plus sine x. That's the derivative of negative cosine times sine x which is equals to zero, as I says. Now, if you look at the last equation, the last part, uh, which says that u1 prime is uh, sine squared, so negative sine squared, divided by cosine x. That's what you get. Uh, now, what we can do, we have to think of how to integrate this one. Uh, so, what we can do is, we can write the top as uh, cosine squared x minus 1 over cosine x is you can split as cosine x minus 1 no cosine means secant x so that means it's very easy to integrate so uh, u1 is the integral of u1 prime dx uh, so let's integrate the two separately so cosine x dx minus the secant x dx and we know the cos, cosine, cosine means the sine x, that's the easy part. Uh, and then, uh, so we have uh, minus, we know that the secant, secant means uh, natural log secant tan, secant x plus tan x, 
that's the formula from calc 2 uh, we are going to add c so calc 2 okay so that's a that's a formula you know the secant uh, integral of secant is c uh, ln secant tan that's a formula okay so now we have that so that means we can write the solution now uh, so the yp is simply u1 y1 plus u2 y2 uh, which is equals to cosine x times sine x minus uh, minus ln secant x plus tan x plus u2 uh, u2 means negative cosine uh, so it is sine x times negative cosine now you can see that this and that get cancelled so you only get the last term uh, so that means the yp is negative cosine x ln secant x plus tan x so the general solution the general solution is y equal yc plus yp c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x minus cosine x ln secant x plus tan x okay. so that is the general solution which has two constants c1 and c2 good so that's the kind of idea how to use the variation of parameters method uh, you're going to write the two formula two equations for uh, u1 and u2 and this uh, use the elimination method to remove one of them and solve for uh, one and then use one of those equations again to solve for the other one uh, the variation of parameters also has a formula so let's discuss that and you are allowed to use that uh, in an exam uh, so let's talk about the variation of parameters formula so uh, the formula uh, formula for uh, variation of parameters variation of parameters method So let's talk about that. Uh, again, the same idea. Uh, let's say two linearly independent solutions to independent solutions of y double prime plus px y prime plus qx y equals 0 a r let's say y1 and y2 that's always the first step we find two linearly independent solutions of the standard equation and then uh, the particular solution is given by a particular solution particular a solution of y double prime plus px y prime plus qx y equal fx is given by by p equal it is simply u2 y2 y1 fx over the Ronskian y1 y2 order matters minus y1 y2 fx over the same run scheme y1 y2 dx so you can remember this formula and use uh, 
when there is a variation of parameters type of problem because there are a lot of problems that you can uh, use the undetermined coefficient method but this works only problem is whether this integral can be done because sometimes what happen this is not gonna work okay sometimes it's even this so this is simply the wrong scheme now you know that why uh, the solution has been independent otherwise the wrong scheme can be zero so we're gonna make sure that it's not equal to zero because we divide by that okay let's just do one example from that just to see how it works um, and then that is the end of the uh, review too so let's do this problem so uh, so let's say a use use uh, the variation of parameters method variation of parameters method method uh, to find the general solution of to find the general solution of solution of uh, this equation y double prime minus 2y prime plus y equal e x over x to the fourth you can see that uh, this see this one you can cannot do using the uh, undetermined, undetermined coefficient method see the format because there's something in the denominator so then you can do it so when you take the derivatives you can powers get more and more and more so it's not going to work okay so let's use the uh, variation of parameters so the answer so first we can look at the characteristic equation, the homogeneous equation so the uh, characteristic equation of the homogeneous equation is lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 equals 0 uh, the zeros are zeros ah you can see it is a lambda minus 1 squared so that means lambda equal 1 1 that's a repeated solution so thus the yc is c1 plus c2 x e x or in other words c1 e x plus c2 x e x so that means those two are the y1 and y2 the two solutions y1 y2 so uh so take a pick or select y1 equal e x and y2 equal x e x uh, as two independent solutions independent uh, solutions uh, now the wrong scheme uh, w y1 y2 so y1 first y1 y2 y1 prime y2 prime so if you plug in you get ex ex x ex that means ex plus x ex if you multiply through you get ex times ex plus x ex minus x e x times ex so you can see uh, this and that get cancelled out so you get e to the 2x which is not equal to zero perfect okay so that's the wrong scheme now the solution so the particular solution is the particular solution by the formula it is yp equal y2 y1 fx over the Ranskian y1 y2 in that order minus y1 y2 fx over w y1 y2 in that order so same same thing no change with a negative sign in between so let's plug in so if you plug in you're gonna get 
x e x e x that's y1 and we have e x over x to the fourth power over Ronskian which is e to the 2x dx minus y1 that is e x uh, we have what we have x e x again e x over x to the fourth over e to the 2x dx and you can see there are a lot of cancellation going on e uh, this cancels with that the same thing happens on the other side uh, so you simply end up getting x e x the integral of 1 over x to the fourth dx minus e x times the integral of 1 over x to the cube <coughs> so these are very easy to integrate so if you integrate them you get x e x times x to the negative 3 over negative 3 negative e x times uh, x to the negative 2 over negative 2 if you simplify uh, you get what do you get negative e x over 3x squared plus e x over 2x squared if you add them you get e x over 6x squared okay that's the yp now what you do how uh, you write the general solution so the uh, the general solution y equal the sum of the two yc plus yp uh, yc is what which is c1 ex plus c2 x ex plus ex over 6 x squared so that is the general solution using the formula so it's not long uh, but you need to simplify the integral this is the end of the review two so next we can talk about uh, uh, review uh, in, in review three we can talk about the series solution at least two examples and the laplace transform and the eigenvectors method